Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to be working with color layering stamps today. There's a lot of them out there by a lot of different companies, and I'm going to be using the layered flamingos from Hero Arts. And if you're interested in these stamps, they have kind of three parts to them, a background layer, a mid layer, and then the shadows. And you stamp them with three different inks. Most people stamp them with like three different pink inks for these flamingos. I don't have a lot of regular old inks. I don't collect them. I don't have room for them. I don't need them much because I do a lot of coloring instead. But I do have a collection of the mini distress inks for just such occasions. So I have stamped the background one, the solid stamp, in spun sugar. And you can see that the images come out a little chunky and weird. And that's because distress inks are not made to really work well onto clear stamps. That's just the way they work. However, if you stamp them onto some paper that's not really good artist paper, if you use good artist paper, you're not gonna have as much luck. And even here, I'm having a little challenge trying to break up some of those very solid areas. Uh, by the way, I'm using Canson XL student grade paper. And what I decided to do was try taking off the worst of the water and then stamp right over top the front flamingo because I want to have two flamingos, one that looks like it's in front of the other one. It's a little easier to move the ink this time. And I'm just going to move it around with my brush. I'm using a brush from the Silver Brush Company and it's a number four round. And all the links for these supplies will be in the doobly-doo down below. In addition to that, I'm also going to list all of the, or at least a bunch of the different color layering stamps if you like this idea and you want to try it with other images. So the second color I'm using is Worn Lipstick. I didn't line these up really well. Either that or the stamps are not made to completely cover the entire bird. So there might be an intention to have a lighter highlight on the back side of the head there. So I'm just going to take my brush and fill in areas. I'm going to go into this background one, the one that's further away, and take a little bit of that ink that's kind of sitting on the tape and using it to modify the rest of the image. And I really wanted to try to, I don't know, soften up that, that area back there. It just was looking a little funky. So I dried it ever so slightly so that I could use a little bit more of the worn lipstick on there and try to fill that in. And then I decided to wait and see what happens when I do the next layer with the darkest color. But I'm just using the little tape there to pick up some of the ink and be able to paint it. Now I wanted to leave a highlight on the back of the flamingo in the front. So I've painted the, the feathers on the background little guy. This time I switched to Festive Berries, which is a darker ink. And then since this is stamping on top of wet again, it's very soft and mushy and it's a little easier to move. The more you seem to do with this, the more that it, it seems to move nicer. And I'll just dip into some fresh water and start moving that color. Now, if you end up with too much color on your brush, just rinse it so you can get some clean water because you'll continue to pick up more ink as you do more of the fussing around with your, your stamp. I'm gonna add a couple extra feathers and that sort of thing to just soften out the transition from the real shadow areas into the lighter areas. And I'll put just a little bit on that background flamingo so that he can have a little bit of darker feathers. And I'm using the negative behind there. You can see I'm, I'm creating, I've created the highlight on the front flamingo by the shapes on the black flamingo, the back flamingo, not the black one. Anyway, let's uh, move along and spread more color out on the neck of the guy in the back or the girl in the back. I'm not sure which is the guy and which is the girl if it's a couple. I'm hoping it's going to just come out to be a card I can send to friends since I wouldn't necessarily have someone to send this to in a romantic kind of way. But I'll just keep softening out that color until it's kind of the way that I want to look at it. I can add more color to it later, but I thought I'll, I'll stop from there and start putting on the legs. I've stamped them and I didn't stamp them really well, but you can see that you can move that color around. I can even pick up color off the tape and spread it around, but I'm just going to 
kind of use the brush to move that color ever so slightly. I wanted to create a little bit of grasses kind of on the other side of the water from my little flamingos. And the stamp set comes with these little, I don't know, I guess they're reeds of some sort. They're really kind of big and chunky and I wanted something a little more delicate. So I used my peeled paint ink in order to just do that basic stamping first and then started taking that color as I started uh, pulling it away from where it was stamped and spreading it around and making thinner reeds so that they looked like they were a little further away. It really did lighten the color quite a bit as you can see. And the more water you add, the lighter it will get. Now you can also take this ink and put it on a palette and create your background like this. For me, I don't tend to use my Distress inks as watercolor. You can see they don't move all that well, <laughs> especially when they're stamped, but it's just a little tougher to get them to move. If I'm gonna just paint straight up with watercolor, I would just grab my watercolors instead. But since they had this stamp that went with the set, I thought I would give it a shot and see. I wasn't really happy with how blobby some of those still were. The ink just never did quite break down. So I took my marker, my Distress marker in the same peeled paint color and just started adding some very light lines. You can use the brush nib in order to make wider ones or use the writing nib on the other side of the pen to make some thinner lines. And I just kept playing around with it. I'm writing on top of wet paper, which is why some areas it's just not writing at all. And if I waited until it was drier, I probably would have had a little more success but I softened a little bit more of it out with my brush and then I was ready to remove the tape and see what's going on underneath. And fortunately this yellow delicate frog tape works really well to mask off what's underneath. I took my salty ocean pad and just tapped it and kind of wiped it along a little bit right where I wanted the water to be. And I'm gonna make the water lighter on the left and darker on the right simply so I don't necessarily have to worry about painting around their legs quite so much. So I'm gonna move the color around with my brush and add just a little bit right where their legs are. The more water you add, the lighter the color will get. So I started spreading it around and it's fine if the green bleeds down into the, the water because that'll just look like reflections. I added very, very light color over on that left-hand side so I don't have to stress out about it too much. And then while it was still wet, I also stamped some of these little reflections. They're little round circles, which make the ripples around objects. And I decided I would go in and create some more grasses, little clumps in the foreground. So it looked like there was some depth to it and the water would be around those little grasses. I've taken the marker and added a little bit more in the salty ocean around them and you can actually draw that in by hand on your other stamps if there's ever anything that you're coloring that would make ripples in water, just make concentric circles and not complete ones, just kind of sketchy ones. And then you could either use the marker to make lines like this or I just grabbed the pad and tapped it and sort of slid it alongside to add more color to the, the base here. I wanted more on the right hand side, I want it to be darker. So I just added more ink by applying it directly to the paper. And since I'm doing it again on wet paper, it just gets mushy nice and quickly and I can move the color around and I can use a paper towel to wipe off some on the left hand side so that it ends up good and soft. I added a little bit of tumbled glass to the top so that I could make some light, very, very light sky and light clouds. I didn't want a lot of color up there, but I wanted something to complete the rectangle because this is going to be a rectangle set into the card itself. You could trim this out rather than taping it off but I wanted to have a really elegant card with a nice nice white mat all the way around it. So I wanted that color around the top and then I just took my black soot marker. You can take any kind of marker once this is completely dry and make your eyes on your flamingos. So I peeled the tape off and there's a little bit of ink that's collected right around the edges and it's really easy to just take a brush and go around and move that color so you don't have a weird little line around the edge of it 
Just make sure you use a good clean brush and you're not pulling some pink or green accidentally up into the sky and that sort of thing. Next comes the scary part. I usually mess cards up when I put the sentiment on at the very end. That is often one of my biggest problems. So I used my Misty so that I could get it nice and straight, lined up exactly where I wanted it. I stamped it first in Festive Berries and then inked half of it in the Salty Ocean. So I get kind of a purplish color, which was kind of fun to add something else extra to it. And then I took my brush with water and just added more, more water to it so it looked a little bit more like it was hand watercolored rather than just stamped, which was kind of cool because then I didn't have to hand letter it. I don't hand letter as beautiful as this font, so it was kind of nice to be able to get that look. I layered my image panel by just cutting another piece slightly bigger than that to fit on the card base, which was even bigger than that. And it was really a nice way to frame out the whole image without having to pop anything, didn't have to add any embellishments, just made it a really nice, elegant, simple card. Here's a couple other videos, if you're interested, that have distress markers or other water-based markers used to create some beautiful cards. And you can click on any one of those to check them out. You can click on the doobly-doo down below to see more of the color layering options that Hero Arts has. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet so you can get more videos from me. I put out about three videos a week. Or visit over on the blog to see stills of the card. And I'll see you later.